Good morning, scholars. It's Mrs. Arkfeld. Um, I hope that you guys have watched your first video this week, your lesson video, and now you're ready to listen to your read aloud. So today I'm going to be reading Bone Button Borscht. Remember, as I'm reading, you guys can pause the video if you need more time to look at the illustrations, or if you need to go back, feel free to go back at any time. Bone Button Borscht. One dark winter's night, a ragged little beggar hobbled along a lonely road. It was snowy and bitter cold, but in his head it was warm and rosy. He saw a blazing fireplace and a table loaded with bowls of borscht, noodle pudding, roast chicken, fruit, nuts, and a jug of wine. And his host was saying, more chicken, Mr. Beggar? And he was saying, oh no, I couldn't eat another bite. Ah, there's nothing like being a beggar, he thought. Such good it brings out in people. They share, they give. And me, I get a little something too. It's perfect. The beggar reached the crest of a hill. He peered out through the driving snow into the night. So where's the town, he asked himself. There should be a town at the bottom of this hill. I can't see it. As he walked downhill, small shadowy houses slowly took shape on his left and on his right. Fine, he said, now I see the town, but where are the lights? Where are the people? He knocked on a door. Please, a little food for a poor starving beggar, he cried. A face appeared in the frosty window, then vanished. There were footsteps and silence. The beggar went to another house and knocked. Please help me, I'm very hungry and cold. Go away, called the voice from within. Just let me in for a few minutes even. No, go away. So the beggar moved on from house to house and door to door, but no one would help him. What is wrong with these people, he wondered. He trudged further down the road. Suddenly, he spotted a thin line of light in the snow. He followed it to a crack in a doorway, pushed the door open, and went inside. It was a synagogue. Thank God for synagogues, he cried, and rushed inside. As he warmed himself by the stove, he looked around the room. Suddenly, he spotted a man in the shadows. It was the synagogue caretaker, the shamas. Shalom, alikaim, peace be with you, called the beggar. The shamas did not answer. Strange, thought the beggar. A glimmer crept into his eye, and the corners of his mouth turned up ever so slightly. He had an idea. He grabbed one of the bone buttons on his coat and tugged. Tch, tch, off came the button. Tch, tch, off came two more. Tch, and another. Tch, and another. Till the shamas did not speak. But now he was looking at the beggar. Now he was curious. The beggar counted the buttons. There were five. Oy, if only I had one more button, he said. The shama said nothing. Oy, if only I had one more button. Still, the shamas was silent. Oy, if only I had one more button. Finally, the shama spoke. Look, mister, I won't give you a button. Nobody in this town will give you a button. Why not? asked the beggar. Because we are poor, Mr. Beggar. We don't give each other, we don't give to each other anymore. So why should we give even a button to a stranger? Why? asked the beggar. Because with one more button, I could make us a soup. I could make a nice hot borscht. That's ridiculous, scoffed the shamas. Impossible. Nobody makes borscht from buttons.
Before I go on, I want to tell you guys, borscht is a kind of soup. So he wants to make soup. And his buttons are actually made from bones. So nowadays we don't make buttons from bones, but this is from a long time ago. So he actually carved the buttons, the bone, into buttons. So it's probably some kind of animal bone is what he's going to put in his soup. Mr. Shamus, said the beggar, I'm shocked. Haven't you ever heard of bone button borscht? Bone button borscht, asked the Shamus. Let me explain, said the beggar. These buttons in my hands are very special. With just one more button from you, I can make bone button borscht for the whole town. I can make you a miracle, Mr. Shamus. Naturally, the Shamus was very curious. All right, he cried, I'll get the button, and he ran to the door. Wait, called the beggar, I'll need bowls and cups and a knife and a ladle and a spoon. Oh, and a pot, maybe? The Shamus sped down the road to the tailor's door and knocked. Mendel, Mendel, give me a bone button, he called. No, go away, shouted Mendel. No, Mendel, you don't understand. The button isn't for me, said the shamus. It's for the little beggar in the synagogue. He's going to make a miracle. With my bone button, asked Mendel. What's he going to do? Raise it from the dead? Teach it to sing, maybe? No, Mendel, he needs it for the borscht. He's going to make borscht from buttons. That's impossible, scoffed Mendel. Nobody can make borscht from buttons. Listen, Mendel, said the shamus. Give me the button. What's it going to hurt? Maybe we'll have a miracle. All right, replied Mendel. I'll give you the button. But I want to come, too. I want to see this miracle. So come, said the shamus. They ran to the house next door and knocked. Leah, Leah, give us a wooden spoon, they cried. No, she shouted, go away. Leah, it's not for us. It's for the little beggar in the synagogue. He's going to make a miracle. With my spoon, asked Leah. What's he going to do? Use it to part the Red Sea? Teach it to dance, maybe? No, Leah, he needs it for the borscht. He's going to make borscht from buttons. That's impossible, scoffed Leah. Look, Leah, give us the spoon. What's it going to hurt? Maybe we'll have a miracle. All right, replied Leah, but I want to come. I want to see this miracle. So come, said the shamus and the tailor. And my family too, she added. So bring them, they said. So Leah, her family, Mendel, and the Shamas marched down the street. They banged on doors, they begged, and they borrowed cups and bowls, a ladle, a knife, and a huge soup pot. Along with all these things, the crowd grew. As it chattered its way up the street toward the synagogue, others came to their windows and doors. Ooh, there's a lot of people. Where are you going, they asked. What are you doing with that pot? And the people in the street replied, there's some beggar in the synagogue who says he can make borscht from buttons. That's impossible, shouted the people in the houses, but they were curious. So they grabbed their hats and coats and joined the others. By the time the shamas reached the synagogue, the whole town was with him. The people crammed themselves inside. The beggar looked up and cried, Shalom Ailishim, peace be with you. There was a long silence. Then someone called out, So, Mr. Miracle Man, make us a miracle. You want a miracle? The beggar asked. I'll give you a miracle. Pot, he cried. They put the pot on the stove. Water, they poured in the water. Button, they gave him the button. We're going to pause here for a second and I just want to ask you guys, do you think he's going to make a miracle? Do you think he can really make soup out of buttons? 
Let's see. Plunk, plunk, plunk. The beggar dropped in all the bone buttons. He picked up the wooden spoon and stirred. When the pot began to steam and bubble, he spooned out some water and took a sniff. Not bad, he said, but it could be better. What could make it better, asked the people. A little sugar, a little salt, a little pepper. That could make it be better, replied the beggar. So they brought him sugar and salt and pepper. He sprinkled them all into the pot and stirred. Then he took another sniff. Not bad, he said, but it could be better. What could make it better? asked the people. Have you got any pickle juice? That could make it better, replied the beggar. So they brought him pickle juice and he poured it into the pot. The beggar stirred and then he stopped. He looked at the people. He looked at the pot. He looked at the people again. Then he shook his head. You've got problems, Mr. Beggar? asked the shamus. The beggar frowned. Wait, said the shamus. He ran to the cupboard and brought back a bulb of garlic. Would this help, Mr. Beggar? he asked. Why not? laughed the beggar. Mr. Beggar, I've got some carrots, someone said. And I've got beets, called another. I've got onions. I've got beans. Would these help, Mr. Beggar? they asked. So what are the people doing? Seems like they're all going to get him something. Let's see what happens next. They wouldn't hurt, laughed the beggar. So the people ran off and returned with their arms full of vegetables. The beggar sliced them all. He diced, he chopped, he shredded. Then he dumped them into the bubbling pot. And he stirred that borscht round and round. Do you know what we have here? asked the beggar. We have a beautiful borscht, that's what we have, a very tasty borscht. Now, some people say a little bit of cabbage really brings out the flavor, but I say keep it simple. Who needs cabbage for borscht? At the back of the synagogue, a woman waved her arms. Mr. Beggar, you want cabbage? I've got cabbage, Mr. Beggar. Before he could reply, the woman was gone. She returned with a sack full of cabbages and handed it to the beggar. He looked at the cabbages. He looked at the people. Then he shrugged his shoulders and began to chop. He chopped until every last cabbage had been added to the borscht. The people watched the steam rise from the pot. They listened to the bubbling borscht. They smelled the rich, sweet, and sour aroma as it filled the synagogue. Bellies rumbled, mouths watered, and everyone pressed in closer when the beggar finally ladled some borscht into a cup. It was deep red and thick with vegetables. He blew on it. He blessed it. Then he dipped in his spoon and he tasted it. Slurp, slurp, slurp. So, Mr. Beggar, how does it taste? Ooh, that looks good. The beggar smiled. Not bad. Who wants to try some? Everyone in the room rushed forward. They snatched cups. They grabbed bowls. Borscht, 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 they chanted. The beggar patiently ladled steaming hot borscht into every bowl and cup. Soon, everyone was sipping and slurping borscht. Then the people raised their arms. They rolled their eyes toward the heaven and they cried out, delicious, perfectly delicious. This is the best borscht we've ever tasted. The little beggar did it. He made borscht out of buttons. It's a miracle. Then, like magic, bread appeared and boiled potatoes and roast chicken and wine. The people ate and they laughed. They laughed and they ate. Then they brought out accordions and violins and they sang and they danced for hour after delightful hour. And when the last slurp of borscht was slurped and the last dance danced, the last song sung, 
the Shamas invited the beggar to spend the night at his house. The next night, another family took him in, then another, and another. One day, the beggar gathered the townsfolk together to say goodbye. Please don't go, they begged. I must, he said. But your buttons! How can we make borscht without your magic buttons? And how can I fasten my coat without buttons? asked the beggar. How can I keep warm without buttons? So they traded with the beggar. They gave him brass buttons for bone buttons. Then the beggar left. They never saw him again. The years passed. One by one, the beggar's bones, bone buttons were lost. But it is a strange thing, a wonder perhaps. The townsfolk learned they didn't really need the buttons. They learned to make borscht without them. And they learned to help one another without borscht, even in hard times. That was the real miracle the beggar left behind. The end. I want you to think about how the people in the town changed throughout the story. Think about the houses at the beginning. They were dark. Nobody was outside. Nobody was helping each other. Now look at this picture. How are the townspeople different at the end? And what did the beggar get them to do? Why do you think so? Lastly, what do you think you could learn from this story? What do you think the townspeople learned?